I was uh, worried by a number of the contacts that the Russians had with U.S. persons. Tonight, so the former CIA director revealing he was concerned by the communication he saw between Trump associates and Russian officials at the height of the 2016 campaign. John Brennan relayed the communications to the FBI, but stopped short of calling it collusion. I don't know whether or not such collusion, that's your term, such collusion existed. I don't know. But I know that there was a sufficient basis of information and intelligence that required further uh, investigation by the Bureau to determine whether or not U.S. persons were actively conspiring, colluding with Russian officials. Brennan led the CIA until the final day of the Obama administration. Today he told Congress he received information that the Russians were working to recruit Americans associated with the Trump campaign. By the time I left office on January 20th, I had unresolved questions in my mind as to whether or not the Russians had been successful in getting U.S. persons involved in the campaign or not to work on their behalf, again, either in a witting or unwitting fashion. Frequently, individuals who go along that treasonous path do not even realize they're along that path until it gets to be a bit too late. By early August, Brennan was so concerned he called the head of Russia's intelligence agency, FSB, to send a warning. I told Mr. Bortnikov that if Russia had such a campaign underway, it would be certain to backfire. I said that all Americans, regardless of political affiliation or whom they might support in the election, cherish their ability to elect their own leaders without outside interference or disruption. That interference has led to an FBI investigation and questions about whether President Trump has sought to discredit, undermine or obstruct that investigation. Multiple current and former U.S. officials tell CNN that President Trump asked two of the government's top intelligence chiefs, Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats and National Security Agency Director Admiral Michael Rogers, to publicly deny evidence of cooperation between his campaign and Russia during the 2016 election. Both men refused the request. Today, Coates refused to comment on the reports. I don't feel it's appropriate to characterize uh, discussions and conversations with the president. It was just last week that sources disclosed President Trump also asked recently fired FBI Chief James Comey to shut down at least part of the investigation. A U.S. official now tells CNN the president made this request in part because White House officials were unsure about the president's power over the bureau. Michael Flynn. And now that Michael Flynn has announced he will invoke his Fifth Amendment rights instead of complying with a subpoena from the Senate Intelligence Committee, Top Democrat Mark Warner is promising to push back. We don't believe that you can take a blanket immunity on the fifth in terms of documents. We'll, we'll take some further action today, two sets of options. And as Chairman Burr mentioned yesterday, we're not taking contempt of Congress off the table either. The investigation into Monday night's deadly bombing that targeted children and teens intensified today. Can you move back down, please? Police conducted two raids in Manchester and named the suspected suicide bomber for the first time. The man suspected of carrying out last night's atrocity is 22-year-old Salman Abidi. This home was stormed by armed law enforcement in connection with the investigation. Police say a 23-year-old man has also been arrested in South Manchester in relation to the terror attack that occurred around 10.30 last night. Oh my God. The blast was heard inside the Manchester arena just after an Ariana Grande performance. As many parents waited to pick up their children and crowds were streaming out of the exits. The explosion outside the venue near the box office was so powerful it can be seen and heard on this dash cam video from a parked car far from the detonation point. The single terrorist detonated his improvised explosive device near one of the exits of the venue, deliberately choosing the time and place to cause maximum carnage. ISIS has claimed responsibility, but a British counter-terror official tells CNN they have seen no links to known terror groups. President Trump was quick to condemn the attack in his own unique way. I will call them from now on losers because that's what they are. They're losers. Immediately following the blast, thousands fled the scene, leaping over chairs to escape. We managed to get through the doors, and how we wasn't crushed to death is a miracle. 
This witness described shrapnel injuries reminiscent of previous terrorist bombings. Obviously, when we've seen children like that as well with blood in, we were having to pull nails out of their arms and stuff and a couple out of this little girl's face. Police are frantically examining the bomb remnants for clues, while experts say this was more sophisticated than the work of a lone wolf. How did this bomber learn how to make this? Uh, in general, it's, I think, highly unlikely that he just learned about it on the Internet. As the United Kingdom reels from its worst attack since 2005, security across the country is stepping up. The Prime Minister vowing terrorists will not prevail.